Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Epic Podcast. Thanks again for joining us. And um, I've got another good friend who we've known each other way back then. He's, um, we were in the same industry. We were in the same company. And uh, interestingly enough, we've stayed with our trade for quite a number of years now, you know, just running in parallel. So I've got Jeff. He's a learning and development manager with a, um, a very well-known F&B outlet chain. So today, um, we are going to be looking into, number one, what the F&B industry all right, within his opinion, of course, is uh, going to be going through how, how they've been training the staff and, you know, what the outlook might be for the F&B industry from the uh, learning and development perspective. So, uh, Jeff, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you so much for inviting me for this. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, before I move into sharing, uh, mm. I just need to have a disclaimer first. Okay. So, while I'm sharing this based on my view. Uh, it has got nothing or not in the, the, the view of the working, the current organization I'm working in, right? Yeah, okay. So, your, your question once again. Yes, uh, okay. What are, what are the F&B um, brands, I would say, or at least in your end, right, for learning and development, mm. what are you guys doing, right, to upskill your workers, to stay relevant, and also to, to, to evolve with the changing times? Okay, um, I guess... For a learning and development point of view for the department, uh, or at least instructions based from the from the top, um, based on the trend, uh, we will need to know what's the trend going uh, going along the way, and then we will have to find the right training programs to to suit them. For example, um, there was a period of time where uh, technology is needed because you do not need to order anymore. You do not need to physical order anymore. And then uh, people start going online to order. Therefore, from our side, uh, there will be, example, Grab, uh, sorry, uh, example, the different de uh, delivery platforms. They will need to know how to uh, use those systems that we have been given. Uh, and therefore, those requires training. So, um, depending on the trend. So, once we identify the trend that the company is slowly moving into, we'll then uh, take a look at the gap between the, the technology that we want and then the knowledge that the staff has. Uh, and then this gap will, will involve the training itself. So it's quite challenging because even now, we do not know uh, what other new system or technology or trend the, the company is moving in. But then mm. what about the uh, older, let's say for example, for older staff, right? Um, mm. Was there any challenges or were there, was there a need to adapt these training systems or programs to give them a little bit more uh, time, patience to pick up, and also what was the process of implementation for them? Uh, you are right. In fact, most of the assumptions, most of the assumptions are the, um, the older staff will have a bit more challenging time uh, because of the way they learn. Because in fact, because of how much, how much more they have learned previously, how much more, how, how many more years they have spent in the previous habit. Uh, to be honest, uh, I'm not sure whether if in other F&Bs it's the same, but um, some, some of the older staff that we do have, um, if we realize that there are only certain things that they could do, for example, they can only be um, being a food server. They can only be a food server uh, because they are already in the 60s, for example, 70s, for example. And um, to get them to use technology is a little bit more challenging. So they will be assigned to only the role of the food server, which they are glad, which they are really quite glad. Yeah. But uh, more of the, even, even for those who are the 40s, 50s, and then they are willing to learn, or maybe because they have no choice of the role that they're playing. So they will learn. They will eventually learn. We will give them patience. Uh, we have to give them patience. Uh, there could be some coaching or personal coaching during the small or low, uh, low human traffic hours back then. Back then. Uh, but now, somewhere between the lunch and the dinner, there's this gap where we will encourage the managers or supervisors to, to, to uh, get the people out individually and then ask them see, to see whether how are their progress on the different technologies, the tablets, uh, the platforms. Uh, we're going to have a new, new, new technology launching soon by September, um, which is the customer service system. Yeah, so they will need to learn how to use all this also. So this is, the question you're asking now, in fact, is very ongoing, very ongoing. So you want to make sure that they still stay in their job, won't get frustrated, uh, because we believe that when they are getting frustrated, uh, the emotions will eventually be transferred over to the, to the customers. 
So yes, we will be patient. We have to be. Mm. Right, agreed with that. I mean, one of the biggest challenges, I think um, we, we've probably seen it in multiple channels of media, right? There, that they cover like, okay, now with this situation, especially the hawker side of things, you know, they started embracing technology a little bit more, using Facebook groups to get their orders, you know, and just to bump up revenue. Um, mm. On your end, right, uh, the, for, for those who are at least moving into the service side of things, uh, how do you also deal with, let's say, for example, that uh, I'm sure that they have insecurities uh, regarding their job security, right? Um, mm. Does does that also come across as part of the training, saying that look, we are investing time in you, your human capital, and that's mm. why you know we would like you to learn this. Mm. Uh, we do, we do. I think the assurance part uh, plays a very very important part, especially when the whole thing uh, broke up many months ago. Uh, for the learning and development department, uh, back then when the whole thing uh, started. The first thing we do was to have a town hall meeting, uh, going to the different outlets, uh, inviting our human resource, inviting uh, even our directors and bosses to go down to the individual outlet to tell them our plan. Yeah, uh, it, was it was never been done before, never been done before. So it was the first uh, town hall meeting to go to different outlets to assure them that this is the direction we are going, uh, which I think is very important for us. And uh, that was also the time that we told them the expectations. Uh, you could be expected to, uh, to, to, to learn. You could be expected, even myself, uh, to be taking some leave because uh, of the cost reduction. I'm aware we are not the only f and that's doing that. Uh, but just to share, just to share that um, our organizations, if it's possible, even until now, uh, retrenchment or removing of people uh, was never in the pipeline. Yeah, it was never in the pipeline. So, uh, but we need the help of the of the staff, um, or HQ or the other staff to to at least be helping by taking some no pay leave. Uh, that's why the government came in to support eighty uh, percent for for the Singapore. Was it eighty percent, seventy five percent, for example, if I, if I could remember, uh, for the Singaporeans. Uh, but we still have the non locals who we don't really get much help from there. Maybe, maybe I'm not really sure. Uh, uh, hoping I'm, hopefully I'm not giving wrong info, but I do know that the, the, the assurance part comes in because I do have because I do visit the staff because I do have uh, staff coming towards me during that period uh, and sharing with me about their thoughts. So having those outlet meetings, uh, I think is very very important. And in fact, from then until now, uh, we have, I, we have been going to the outlet for I think once for every every phase, new phase, uh, the circuit breaker we went down once. Phase one, uh, we went down another time with the HR. So assurance becomes very important. Uh, at least we update them along the way uh, to make sure they know the directions. So at least we know, just now we had uh, offline, we had this conversation about the purpose, purpose of uh, what people are doing. So we have to let the staff know why we are doing certain things. So at least is to ensure that we are all still going strong together. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, we have to be aligned. We have to be aligned. So at least they are engaged uh, in that area. Uh, are the motivation or the morale still uh, still low? I would say yes, because we are still impact, uh, impacted. Yeah, uh, in terms of pay. But at least our company's direction is no one will, will be retrenched. Mm. Great. Um, that actually you were you you brought up the the point on motivation. That was actually going to be my next question uh, uh, okay. toward that. Like how how do you number one right? Um, I mean this sounds a little bit more like an HR question in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, how do you keep your ears to the ground? Uh, and and is there a metric for actually handling motivation? Like you know is how how do I know that? Yes, they, they, we don't expect our staff to be like wow gung ho. I must you know wow represent the company super well but at least uh, know that they are part of the company they will not be left behind and yes mm. my loyalty is there how does HR or at least in training and development actually measure this mm. uh, motivation wise uh, measurements honestly until now uh, I've learned I've learned the profiling tool before uh, but of course we are not able to do the profiling tool of motivation on every single one uh, but at this moment, actually, there is no, there's no actual measurement of statistics. 
even if I'm to use uh, mystery customers, even if I'm to use um, audits, it doesn't really measure the motivation. So it, it, it really, it's really based on feeling. It's honestly based on feeling. It's based on uh, what people have done before. Example, um, this group, uh, this the feeling of an outlet, the feeling of an outlet, it used to, uh, used to win praises of their service or their food. But let's say, suddenly when you enter the outlet for, for whatever reason, you, you feel that the energy level is low. You could feel it. You could really feel it. Uh, maybe because of the number of years uh, of training uh, that we have been through before meeting with people, you could feel that how come it feels a little bit awkward. So if it happens, we will talk to the, uh, the outlet managers to see whether if, if anything is going on. Internally, did anyone share any of their personal feel or thing towards the, the, the manager? If there is, then we will ask to see whether if there's anything that we can solve. Uh, it, apart from that, the only thing that we can at, le at least do is to once again ensure, ensure them that uh, things are, I would say improving, at least we see based on circuit breaker to phase one to phase two, things are improving. Uh, we will update them with the news because I, I, I visit the outlets quite, quite often. So I myself have to be updated with the news. For example, the, 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 the number of people that's being infected every single day, uh, at least on the directions of the company, or at least based on um, the tourism, the, 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 the industry, they're beginning to let people uh, come in for whatever reasons it could be essential or not. Uh, or the, um, the development of the vaccine, at least based on the article, because some of the people may not be reading articles. So these are the information that we have to feed them uh, along the way to let them know that uh, we are more, we are at least improving, we are at least improving uh, along the side. For example, some outlets that's more of, um, focusing on the tourist side. Uh, if you are aware, those people who, who, who are aware, we have uh, different outlets in, for example, the Clarkey areas, for example. So this, that's a little bit more on the tourist side. Uh, so those outlets, they have, uh, it's, quite, it's quite empty. It's quite empty because we really don't have the tourists to, to come in. But if you, move, if you take a look at some of the, 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 the residential sites we have, uh, those areas, they, the weekends, the Friday, uh, Friday Saturday, Sundays, the, the, the lunch and dinner, you don't feel much impact from that. You don't feel much. So uh, knowing this, uh, knowing this information, at least you'll let those uh, other outlets know that, you know, uh, things are still going on. You may not see it, but things are still going on. Management are doing something about it. So uh, don't worry. If you have any worries about uh, you leaving the job, you know, if your main worry is uh, we will retrench you, no, we are not going to retrench you. So don't worry about it. If you're worried it's about we are going to have another pay cut, no, at this moment, we are not going to have another pay cut. So uh, we need to know the cause of their worry then at least we, we assure them based on the portion. Ah, that's really good. Uh. At least you know that you're on the ground. That's, I, I think yeah. that's something very important uh, that um, no matter how big the organization is, there really needs to be a, 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 a very dedicated team, right? To at least have, have their fingers on the pulse, uh, if you wanted to call mm. it that, right? Mm -hmm. um, to hear from people. And, but one of the biggest things right, I've always found very challenging was that once you, let's say, for example, you're new to the company, you know, within mm. the HR or learning and development, and mm. you're expected for people to trust you first, you know? Yeah. But that's yes. really, that's, uh, the irony is that you need people to trust you in order to get the true information, the real information, yes. right? Yes. Um, how long did that take for you uh, to earn that trust, or at least for you to really feel it deep down that, okay, they, they, can, they can speak with me? Mm. Uh, it took me, I guess the approach, um, it, the approach from, from beginning, uh, the things that we highlight to them on our purpose in our job, uh, it makes a big difference. Mm. Of course, whether they believe or not is another thing. So to me, I think it took me, it took me more than uh, three to six months. Three to six months, yeah. Uh, because of the job that I, uh, I'm doing, I, I only get to visit the outlet once or twice a month uh, before, before COVID, yeah, before COVID. So once or twice a month, but it's during this once or twice a month uh, on the communication that I have with them, um, letting them know that my job is not to, to, to punish. The job is never to, uh, to find fault with them. Uh, the job mainly is to make sure that the customers are safe. That's why we are doing all those audits at all. Yeah. 
uh, we are do, we are moving towards the direction of the company. And I guess it's also not um, not the way that I train or not the way that I approach. Uh, I don't scold, I don't reprimand. Um, I will in fact share with them the reason, the purpose behind why we are doing certain things and to let them know that we are, we are, in, we are in line together. You know, we are, we are all together doing certain things for the organization. Yeah. Uh, it took me three to six months because um, initially when I went over, they have the idea that, uh, oh, I am with the HQ. Yeah. You know, there, there, could be a, there could be a line being drawn with the outlets and the HQ. There right. Like corporate spy. So, uh, you know, I'm coming here. Yes, to, yes, yes. Uh, yes. yes. So, uh, my main, in fact, I was aware of that. Uh, I mean, it's, it is, it, it, what I'm saying is, it's not there, but I'm just uh, guessing that because I was a staff before. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was a staff before, so when there's anyone from HQ, uh, from other companies coming down, you'll be like, oh, you know, we better be careful and all. Mm. So I'm, uh, I'm just using my past experience and to, to, to apply in the current organization. So um, for, um, I put my role as a, uh, a bridge where people, from the outlet, if they have any challenges, they can come to, come to me. And I will then let the information flow towards the HQ. Yeah. So having this thought, having this idea of my role, it plays a very important part on what I do. For example, if there are, there are really some voices coming from the outlet, I must make sure that I do not just put it at the back of the head and then just move on. I make sure that I pass it over to the HQ and there is a follow-up. There's a follow-up. And I think that's important. So because once I have a follow-up um, for one, once, twice, three times, they notice that, hey, Jeff is able to, to transfer my information over to, to the HQ set. Yeah? Therefore, uh, that becomes a role. They trust that uh, I'm helping them. But of course, the line is being drawn saying that uh, if there's anything, you let your supervisor, outlet supervisor and your manager know first. You do not cross the line and then you come straight to me. Yeah, and in fact, if there's anything that comes towards me, I will then I will first ask the manager whether it's been highlighted before. If it's not, I will let the manager know uh, that uh, this being mentioned before, and then I will go over to the staff the, to, to to inform him or her that oh, you know, just to let you know, I have uh, informed your manager about this because I think it's important that your manager knows. Uh, but if uh, let's say if it's not being mentioned or not being done along the uh, during this period for my next uh, before my next visit. Drop by, let me know, you know. Let me know, and we'll go along the line. So I think it has been working well. It has been working well. So at least um, based on what I, I've seen is when I go to the outlet, uh, when I greet them, they'll greet me back uh, along the line. That's what I see. Yeah, that's what I see. Hmm. And uh, did anybody ever mention this to you? Like, hey, one of these days, our uh, robots will come in. Uh, you know, you all talk about technology, but. All the robotics that's going to happen, are they going to have robot servers and, you know, take our jobs or not? Mm. Uh, I think they don't need to ask because uh, it's quite scary because they see it every day. <laughs> yeah. For example, the, 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 the reality during the circuit breaker. I think it's a very harsh reality on how much we do not need an additional server or waiter to take your order. I think that's a reality because... Uh, orders were all being made online, so we we have to uh, we have to train some people who are not used to packing the dishes because back then it was um, it was all delivery. Uh, people come over to to take away, so those people taking the orders they are not they are not needed. It's it's really they are they are not needed at that at that point of time, and then um, using that as a reference, I do feel that in time to come. Uh, it could be the company strategy. I'm not referring to my, uh, the company I'm working in. I'm referring to uh, as a whole. Uh, the service, the, the taking of the order may slowly begin to move towards the uh, using the iPad. There are many F&B outlets that are doing that, that now. Once you go in, they'll let you know that the, uh, the, the tablet is here. Order it yourself. Even though uh, my current company, we still focus on no, I, I approach you and I'll take the order from you. Uh, the main reason is because since many, many years ago, since the start, the company believes in human touch. That's what we believe in. Yeah, that's what I believe in. However, if there's any changes that we, um, it could be the, 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 the people, the, the, 
the staff or foreign staff that we can have in one organization or it could be based on uh, whatever reasons technology uh, implementations we will have no choice but to slowly move back to you know using the tablets for all the yeah so yes uh, I think technology will take over even though they didn't ask I believe they are aware uh, in fact, I often tell them also, I said, you guys, we need to upgrade. Uh, we need to upgrade, we need to learn along the way also. Because uh, if they are aware of, of uh, a sushi brand in Singapore, where they, are not, they do not need someone to take order. In fact, it's being taken on the tablet. And then the food is being served via a very, new, uh, a very fun concept, which is a train. Ah, yes. Yeah, I think it's fun. I think it's fun. Uh, it's, it's a whole new theme. I think it's really cool. But if I take a step back and, and I take a look at how this technology disrupts some of the jobs that, that's there, uh, I think it's quite scary. Yeah, because uh, at least I'm telling you, oh, the service job, the one taking the order, uh, it was not needed uh, during the circuit breaker. But hopefully when the time uh, recovers, we still need that. But that company, uh, that brand actually eliminates the, the taking of the service, uh, the, the taking of the order, and it eliminate, uh, eliminates the serving of food. They didn't, even, so they, didn't, they didn't even do it from the start. So technically, yeah. I mean, but that could have been just been an operational costing uh, hmm. matter rather than actually foresight uh, toward, um, let's say, for example, autonomy or, or just hmm. having some sort of novelty. Yeah, yeah because uh, at least at this moment, and uh, all organizations, I feel, I, I feel that for uh, not only f and but uh, every single industry, it could be based on uh, maximizing my revenue of whatever I can have now and then reducing the cost. So if um, using technology is a way to move towards or forward uh, where in long term, even when the whole thing recovers, uh, we have a cost cutting, we can have cost cutting. I'm not surprised that even, even the f &B that I'm in now, we could move towards that direction. If right. it helps in cost cutting. Uh, but at least, at least, I don't think it's in the plan now to have a robot uh, serving people because there are still considerations from there. Right. But if that's the case, right, um, if assuming that we're going to be using more technologies, more of these um, service replacement, or mm. I, I don't know, they, they could say it's value adding or, or, or um, solu you know, technology solutions that will help render some services here and there. But at the end of the day, right, um, looking at the industry out there and all the workers or all the staff, right? What would be your advice uh, to them, right? Uh, in terms of what they should upgrade uh, so that they can uh, kind of get ahead of the curve and not be replaced by machines, but instead still have a place and be relevant and current in, in the F&B industry. Mm, I advise, right? Uh, I think they have to be very aware of the trend. And in fact, uh, if they are to really take a look at the causes being offered by the government, I, I think it's a very good indicator because the government, the government knows where they will be bringing the economy next. For example, um, why is it there are a lot of IT causes now? So I think it's a great hint. I think it's a great hint. Uh, that means we could be moving into robotics. We could be moving into uh, automations. That's why the government are pushing, pushing people to be taking all these causes, regardless of the age they are, they, are, they are in now. So I think looking at the causes the government uh, is, is pushing for uh, is a very, very good indicator. Uh, and from my side, how do we encourage the, uh, the staff? Or um, let's say if they are not aware of what the government is doing, then in that case, we will have to be the one to tell them, oh, these are the causes that we, you may have to take. Or if not, if not, these are the causes that we will design and bring it over to them. Of course, when it comes to robotics, uh, I'm definitely not the expert. So we may then have to bring an external vendor. Uh, for example, I mentioned about having the new customer service system uh, or customer, customer relationship system. So that is the technology. Uh, we will then bring the vendor in to give us training. Uh, from, from in that area itself. So it's, it's really step by step. Uh, first thing is they need to know the trend. They need to identify what causes is in the market because uh, if they really open their eyes and the ears, they will realize that the, 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 the causes that's being offered now is very, very different from some of the causes that's being offered last time. 
Yeah, so I think it's a, it, it, it is a very good indication on where the trend is going. And then um, the next level would be if they're not aware, what can the L&D side in the organization do to make sure that the, the, the staff uh, is following the trend? Uh, this is something I think I keep in my mind. For example, I'm aligned with the company. No, we, are, we are going to have no retrenchment. We aim for no retrenchment. We are not going to let people go because we are, we are all in one big family. So this pushed me to have uh, an intention to pick up the trend from the government and then to bring in to the, to the organization and then to fill the gap. Especially if I know which direction the, government, or the company is going. And will you be getting the outlet managers to nominate staff to attend these courses or will you be hand-picking like, oh, you know, who would you be recommending? Like, like, okay, this person of this age group of this skill set should be part of this, or at least set the criteria for that. Uh, it de- actually it depends on what training. It depends on what training. For example, if it's um, a technology training, for example, uh, it's a new system that we're using. Uh, sometimes you just need to train the manager. The manager has to be the one that's proficient because that person will be the one that's spreading the information down to the rest of the people. Yeah. Uh, the manager or the supervisor has to be the one that's the expert because when they face any, any difficulties, they will definitely approach the manager first before they approach us. Yeah. So then it becomes um, a manager training. But let's say if it's a, it, it's, a, it's a bigger system, it's a bigger system where the information is needed uh, for all the stuff. Okay, for all the stuff. Uh, we will then bring the vendor in because uh, something that we have been doing for the past two weeks, uh, been going to the different uh, different outlets to share information, getting the vendor in to, to share with them. So the older staff, they may not know how to do the actual system. It's fine, but they need to know the information. Mm. Yeah. So these are the, this, this is how we categorize on who needs to learn what. Um, if it's more on customer service, it's more on customer service, for example, there's a new implement, uh, implementation of a service system, service language, for example, we will then go towards the outlet and then we will train uh, mainly on the staff, mainly on the staff. And then uh, the focus may not be on the manager or the supervisor. So it depends on what, what's being trained. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, wow. mm. this this reminds me of us how how we went back uh, back then. You know, I uh, mean, mm. we were in the same training company. I mean, now that uh. you, you're conducting training so often already, right? I one thing is that we started off right with children's training uh, or student mm-hmm. training, right? And then yes, you yes, went yes. on to outdoor mm. and and all that. So how how what do you think the 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 difference is uh, right now for you uh, mm. Like when when we start off with schools and mm. now that you're with corporate. Mm. Um, mm. What do you, I mean, how different is it for you right now? How different for me? Okay. Uh, I think just, okay. Uh, moving from one stage to another, the main, I think the main difference for me, the main, main difference, like, I mean, difference for me is um, I realized that over the years, it's true as much as I do not want to accept, but uh, yeah, energy level of uh, my body begins to drop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I guess, and I guess that's the main reason why I move on from one organization to another. Yeah. Uh, but it's a, it, now that I ask, uh, thinking back, I think it has been a blessing. It has really been a blessing. Um, because, I, uh, because I want to move on from the kids, uh, the children to the outdoor. Uh, because I realized that I couldn't, my, my, my stamina, I couldn't catch up with the kids' stamina anymore. Yeah. So th- therefore, uh, I, the moment I have that thought, of, I think I need to move on towards the corporate. But I have no corporate experience. How? So the moment I have that thought, I think it's a blessing. Uh, the next outdoor industry, the outdoor company came along mm. and then I moved into that. Therefore, I started having my corporate experience. Yeah, so I think it's a blessing. And the change from there, it, it's quite scary. Uh, it's, at least for me, it's quite scary. Uh, training many, many, diff- uh, many years with the students. The moment I moved into corporate, uh, Standing on the, uh, I could still remember until now, standing on the stage facing a group of adults. It's quite intimidating. <laughs> yeah, it's quite intimidating. Uh, having them sitting there, some of them folding their arms looking at you, it's like they give you the face of, come on, impress me. <laughs> like, it's quite scary. Yeah, even though, even though uh, it was an outdoor, it was a fun activity. Yeah, it's quite intimidating. Uh, so I had to change my mindset of I cannot use the same way of speaking towards 
the adult anymore. So that's something I have to unlearn and relearn. Yeah, because I was in the, the, the student industry for, for more, than, more than five years. So suddenly there have to be a change of, um, uh, of a training, uh, training way. So I have to change. I, I have to adapt to that. And uh, thank God for that. I managed to, to change a bit, managed to plan in a bit of the more, because I'm more expressive. So uh, in terms of training, a little bit more drama. Uh, and it helps. I managed to come up with my own way of training uh, even for the adults. And I think they, they accepted it. And, and then moving along the way, uh, after spending quite a number of years in, in the outdoor environment, uh, being in the sea, doing sailing, dragon boat, being in the air, doing um, all the high elements of being on land, doing the workshop. Uh, after a while, I think once again, the same reason comes about, <laughs> okay? Uh, because it's, it's quite long hours along the way also. And when it comes to the, 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 the slightly uh, more, I would say, the, and the age-wise, yeah. My priority, my priority changes because I'm looking for more work-life balance because mm. uh, I, I would prefer to have a job where it's only Monday to Friday, fixed time. And the moment I have that thought, and once again, it's a blessing, uh, this current opportunity comes. And I, and I move over, and I move over, and, and the, I need to unlearn certain things again and, and relearn certain things again. Because I have always been with... Um, it's like, it's like a small session of training and coaching where it can take only just one day, three days. Even for, even for outdoor activities, it could be a leadership camp, but it's only for three days. After three days, we don't really see them anymore. But now I'm moving into an organization where I see this group of people every single day. So that mindset of, I'm going to, tra- I'm going to impart my knowledge to you for three days, after that we don't see anymore. There's no follow-up anymore. So this mindset now has to be changed. Yeah, it's no longer just three days. Palm that you you can go off now. You'll be motivated. Uh, in fact, this motivation, this this knowledge, uh, has to be follow up. Like when you now now that when I see these people, uh, after a month, uh, because I need to do outlet outlet visit, I need to find a way to remember what they mentioned to me a month ago. And then to do a follow up. Yeah. So, uh, I guess the. The, the big scale of training back then, uh, one day, three days, moving into, slowly moving into the coaching aspect. Coaching aspect. So it becomes that um, it's more of the guiding, coaching, mentoring uh, at this stage as com- uh, more, more than the big scale training that I used to do back then. Yeah. So the approach in training has changed. The mm. mindset of um, patients where uh, I listen to you and I address your concern and the, the discipline to do follow-up with them is something that was never really being done in the previous two industries. Yeah. So that's the major change I would say. Right. Yeah. So you stuck with training all this while already, right? Um, yeah. we, talk, we spoke about purpose. Now, you've stuck mm. with this for so long. What is your purpose mm. in all of this? What keeps you going? In the training industry, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I think the main purpose, even until now, it's to see, is to see them, is to see them learn, is to see them learning. Yeah, um, I don't have to be the person training. I could be the person organizing. Yeah, but as long as from the facial expression of the learners, when I notice that they learn something new, uh, away from, it could be in the job or it could be skills and knowledge away from the job. But the moment I see them learning, I feel that I have impacted them in their life. Because they have learned something new. Uh, yes, it doesn't mean that they can apply it now, perhaps. Right? It doesn't mean that they can apply it straight away. Uh, but I know that this knowledge could be a, a resource that they can, it can be kept in their mind. So one day when they, are, when, they, when they face a challenge or difficulty, at least they have learned it before. At least they have the, hey, I think I've learned it before. Um, so... The impact may not be immediate, but it could be in the near future. Because, for example, if they, if they recall, oh yeah, Jeff taught me that, or Jeff organized a training session with me years ago. Yeah, uh, he shared me before. So let me, go, let, me, let me look up for the learning manual that's been printed last time. So I think um, my main motivation back then 
from then until now, it's really it's really the to make sure that they, they learn because uh, knowing that the reality out there is quite harsh. Uh, if you do not know certain things, you could be you could be removed. So uh, I have that concern. So I would love to see them learn. Uh, and their, their, their facial expression uh, kept me going. The facial expression really kept me going. But to be honest back then, to be honest back then, uh, when I first started in 2005, during the, the kids uh, training, right? What kept me going back then was, uh, you know, when people come over to you and say, oh my God, trainer, you are awesome. You know the phrases? <laughs> <laughs> my God, uh, Jeff, uh, you're so funny. So back then, it was all this, Thing, all these, all these uh, compliments that, that kept me going. But after a while, I realized that uh, those are quite surface. When, you, when, when, when we begin to find a more, um, uh, I would say, purpose in why we are doing that, because all those, all those praises, I think it, it cannot last long. No, that's uh, just no. topping on the cake, la, but it doesn't nourish yeah. your soul, la, if you want to it say that. It doesn't really nourish the soul. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. Well, I remember I, the, the fun part about training was always like what you mentioned, uh, that you see that spark, you know, the, the light bulb finally switch on, you know, that person finally grasp it and all of a sudden the possibilities are endless. You know, you, you link one thing to another and uh, you, you finally open up a brand new avenue of thought that, yeah, I could do this. I could go mm. there. I could become something like this and this is mm. how I can apply that. You know, and not just about in my job right now or in my position right now, but years down the road, what I could do, you know. I, I remember um, because at one point in time, I was in the hospital at the time. I went for ankle androscopy. Um, there was this older nurse, really senior, old nurse, you know, like on the brink of retirement really kind of thing. She, we, we just started chatting. Um, and then she had mentioned, you know, why, you know, that sh suddenly she... Um, uh, she felt like she wanted to go into psychology, but she's a bit old. And I was mm. like, why? Then what is stopping you? you know, so, so then the the whole system of what we had before is what your limiting beliefs were, mm, mm, right? Mm, then we start to yeah. remember things like that. And then I just told her, so what is holding you back? You know, she mm. mentioned, oh, you know, my kids and all that. Um, I said, yeah, but how old are your kids already? Yeah, they have their own family. So okay, so you, so is that really a factor for you right now? Actually, mm. no. Then the next thing is, um, money-wise, you all are okay. Yeah, you got gratuity. What? You're a nurse for so long. Yeah, she got package mm. and everything. So mm. then we boil it down, you know, because apparently nobody had spoken with her so openly about about her her current state, you know, mm. and the co level of confidence. At the end of the day, it was just her belief. So from there, we just started talking about it and I also shared with her what I wanted to do, you know, even though I have this like bad ankle and whatever, this is, where I'm going to go. And after this, I'm still going to run the marathon, you know, within, in one year's time, I'm going to run the marathon next year. So we mm -hmm. just started chatting. And um, funny thing was, it was a couple of days after, and then I was being discharged. She, she actually said that she had enrolled for oh, the, okay. the course and then okay. she's going to do it. So I was like, okay, oh, cool. And she said that her kids were, um, very happy and very supportive that she was going to do it because they were encouraging her, but she was the one stopping herself. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wow. Oh, so the kids, the kids have been encouraging her. Yes. The kids ah. have already encouraged her, but it was very subtle in the sense that you want to go, you do, you do, ah. you know, there's ah, no problem okay. for us, but it's never been something like I'm pushing you, go and do it, mom, go and do mm. it, you know, but after she started bringing that up and talking about it, then their conversation, the tone of the conversation had changed because it's no longer about what, um, I kind of feel like doing, but it became something that is something that I really must do. Mm. It's, it's such a big mm. difference, you know, that, you know, something that I just kind of do want to do versus something I must do. It became from that want to a must, you know? So it's very interesting that when we, we were teaching the kids that all of a sudden the principles now still apply even to adults. Mm. And then what I loved was, yeah. I mean, how we actually got into this conversation, you and I, all right, uh, Jeff, uh, was that, I saw your post on LinkedIn about E plus R equals to O and that brought oh, back yes, a lot yes, of memories. Yes. So I was like, okay, yes, yes, so yes. for the benefit of those who are watching and, and listening now, this is a good nugget of information for you. Uh, Jeff, or would you like to be able to, would you take this one, please? What is E plus R equals to O? Oh, okay. Uh, e plus R equals to O. Uh, e refers to event, right? Event. Uh, and then R equals to response and it will then eventually leads to an outcome. 
So what we have learned back then, even until now that I really, really appreciate this, um, is a learning. Uh, so what's being described is E event is something that we cannot control. Something that we cannot control. Uh, while response is something that we can react uh, based on the situation, knowing what outcome that you want. So putting a hundred percent, putting a hundred percent based on the outcome. Uh, event only plays up to five percent, five percent of it, because something that we cannot control. But ninety-five percent of it, which is the response that we're going to have, it will detect most of the outcome. Uh, the outcome could be different. Yes, it could be slightly different um, because of the event that happened. But at least it's near. It's not so far away from the initial outcome that you really want. So the, the important thing is on the 95% of the outcome. So E plus R equals to O. But if there's anyone who, who put 95% on the E, uh, and then your response is only 5%, you'll notice that these people will just do something and then they mention, nah, it cannot be done. Because they blame the situation. They blame the situation. They are in the victim mode. This is something which I believe you may remember also. Mm. They're, in the, they're in the victim mode where they are helpless. They couldn't do much. Uh, they could only complain. Uh, they blame everyone else except for themselves for not doing anything. Right. So uh, this is something that I've learned uh, back then even until now that E plus R equals to O is one of the, is one of the important success principles that I've learned in the, in the, in the first training company that uh, until now that I remember. Right. Um, I may not share it with the, the people on the ground, but it's something that I would use another way to tell them that, you know what, um, yeah, we have no choice. That's something I put it across. You know, right. this thing happens, we have no choice. We're not, we do something that we can do. Correct. Yeah. You, you can't yeah. change the event, but uh, I think the, the, like what we were talking about was that the real power shift comes mm -hmm. in knowing that your response is your choice. Yes. You choose your and own response. You can choose to and get choices angry. choices have? Yeah, consequences. Thank you yes. very much. <laughs> now, I've been telling my son this for the longest time already. Every uh, time, every time, just lecturing him on this. Yeah, so, yeah, so these are the, I think, I think it's fun. I think it's fun that, now that you mentioned, uh, all these success principles are coming back to my mind. Mm. And uh, without, without being aware, actually I've been using it uh, to, 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 to tell myself. Yeah, to tell myself. Uh, one of my favorite is, uh, Success, success is going towards your goal every single day. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I may face challenges, for example, uh, in my new job, but as long as I see improvement, I think it's cool. Uh, for the seniors, for the people who are learning new skills, they will, feel, they will feel impatient, but I will tell them directly or indirectly that, hey, do you, do you, do you feel that you're more familiar with the system now? Yes. Oh, good. You know, that's, a, that, that, that's a celebration. Let's move for improvement every single day. Mm. So yeah, these are success principles that I, I think is so important. Right. One that I've uh, recently acquired was that um, we we should yes we we always aim for the goal uh, But the most important mm. thing, right, is that we we should aim for progress and not perfection. Mm. Mm. So this is something that I was also looking at. It's like yeah, a lot of the time we we want to take this paint the perfect picture and then we finally mm. go for it. But fact is, you need to <clears throat> see the progress as you go along. Mm. And that in itself tells you a, a, a bigger part of the story than the mm. actual outcome. Mm -hmm. Because we may never attain that, that perfect picture that we have in our minds. But mm. reaching there you know, and planning the steps along the way, that is more important. Mm. Yeah, I think, it's a, I think this is a good shout out to those people who, who planned a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they, they want to have this uh, perfect... Um, Back then when I was running event, team building, uh, they want to have this perfect event. They want to have the perfect training. Uh, they want to have the perfect image before, before they, do, they do many things. And, and because of that, it kept them from taking even the first step. Mm. And they only plan. Yeah, they only plan. So I think there's a very good shout out to, 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 to people out there. You know, uh, only when you begin to do, you may then realize that uh, certain things may be different from the, 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 the plan that you have. But it's okay. We, we move towards it step by step. It's better than you only have it on the drawing board. Yeah. True. True. Hey, yeah. thanks so much, man. I really appreciate Thank the time you. that you're putting into this. Now, I've Thank got you. one more Thank segment you. for you, mm -hmm. which I, I don't normally send, but I think those who are listening in will already know that I'm going into this rapid fire questionnaire so that people get to know you a little bit better Okay. in the shortest amount of time. 
Okay, okay. so are you ready? Okay, I'll do my best. Okay. <laughs> Now, one word that you love the most. Uh, grace. One word that you dislike the most. Uh, stupid. <laughs> If you could have a conversation with one person, dead or alive, fictional or non-fictional, past, present or future, who would you mm. like that to be? Uh, I wouldn't want to go to be uh, too too religious, so I would say uh, <laughs> uh, LKY. LKY, nice. Mm. Mm. Favorite dish and place to eat. Uh, favorite dish will be uh, Kang Kong, the 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 Ma Ai Fong Kuang. I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah. Sambal Kang Kong. Yeah, Sambal Kang Kong. Yes. Uh, and then the favorite place to eat, I would say, is just my home. Hmm. So you do it yourself. Uh. No, I tap out. Oh, yeah, <laughs> tap out I, and I, eat at my home. Ah, <laughs> uh, I thought you actually start to start started cooking all that on your own already. Uh, I I I want to, I want to, but I guess I it uh, it's not my priority at the moment. But you never know. Once I go to the next stage, you know, then I will begin to learn. Yes, learn. please. Okay, if you couldn't um, if you couldn't be in training, right? What mm. do you think you'd be doing now? Uh, if I'm not in training, I guess I could end up being uh. Customer service, as long as it's really related to customer. Very human centric, lah. Uh, la. Yeah, very human. Be around the people, that yes. kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, a very quick story. Uh, I used to be. I graduated from logistics uh, uh, diploma. Mm -hmm. I went into the logistic uh, industry for three months, where I sat in one position to do my work. Uh, after three months, I quit. I never went back anymore. <laughs> yeah, that was. In fact, that was the job that got me to realize what I actually like. Ah, same. I had a similar experience. It was my yeah. internship in Bali. Mm. <laughs> I sat there counting screws and packing them. Oh, oh, oh my god! Okay, oh, I did that god. for three weeks. I wanted to literally. I, the now I know why people commit suicide. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot because it's something that I completely did not love. Mm. The pay was terrible and just no purpose in my life whatsoever. Mm. So it was so, very very so tough. If the pay if the pay was high, would uh -huh. you stay? No, no, right? Yeah. No, I can't. I can't do that. It's like basically. Yeah, I think that's so yeah. important. Correct. I think that's so important. If you if you find if you realize there's a job with high, even if it's a high pay, and you rather and you rather move off, yeah, that is totally the industry that's not meant for you. Hmm. Yeah. All right. And what does retirement look like to you? Uh, retirement looks like volunteering. Nice. Yeah. Uh, that's at least that's how I view it. Uh, volunteering, retirement looks like assuming I have the financial. Retirement looks like uh, doing charity. Yeah, so that's at least that's how retirement looks like. Right. Yeah. Nice. But uh, maybe working for an uh, uh, like a non-profit organization. Uh, uh I, yeah. Uh, maybe just just helping out in churches, for example. Mm. Are Are you volunteering at the moment? Uh, at this moment, no. But I'm looking to serve, serve, serve the ministry, serve ah, God. Yeah. Okay, that works too. That works too. Mm -hmm. And last question is: How do you want to be remembered? What's your legacy? Uh, I would like to be remembered as someone who, who is very willing to share, patient. Yeah. So at least, um, at, at least at this moment, uh, that's something I would love to be remembered for. So this person may not need to remember how I look like. <laughs> may not need to remember. <laughs> Um, what I said, but at least remember the positive feeling or the empowering feeling or emotions that I brought to this person before. Yeah. So, oh, I remember. Like for example, I remember there's this there's this trainer. I cannot remember his name. I cannot remember what he said, but I remember he brought me warmth. For example, yeah, he he brought me motivation. He brought me he brought me hope that that things are still not that bad. So at least that that would be um, what I pictured. All right, it's kind of like the Mother Teresa of training, are you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> If you uh, could, there is this, there's this trainer, there's this trainer, uh, uh, even until now, uh, where I still remember what he mentioned about his purpose in training, um, which is to go in. It doesn't have to be training, in fact, but it's to be able to go in, uh, meet someone new, and make that person feel better. Mm. After the person, after after we you know we move on to to do our own things. So it could be a stranger, it could be a coffee shop uncle or auntie, or anyone. Uh, make that person feel better after that person met you. Yeah. So 
I know it's tough. <laughs> I know it's tough. Uh, but it's something at least I do my best to inform. Right. Now you've got the heart for it. Like, and I uh, honestly, I wish you all the best. I know you'll be there. And uh, Thank you. Thank I, you. look, the fact that we've been in touch, we haven't been in touch for quite a while, you know, yeah, but, yeah. you know, uh, this actually brought us back together. I think, uh, you know, you're on the right path, man, for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this information. Hey, no this- problem. No problem, man. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Anyway, thank you. thanks everybody for joining us. You know, if you want to reach out to Jeff, feel free to just look, uh, look for him on LinkedIn if you want to. Just drop in an email or anything like that. He'll be more than happy to get connected with you as well. On my end, now do me a favor. Again, if you do like content like this, click like, subscribe or whatever it is that we do on YouTube. And we'll see you next week.